very good evening Charlie blessed supper to each and everyone watching from me around the world my name is Bob Caliber and just as we promised and just as we scheduled uh, on the 9th of uh, July we are here to discuss that critical subject that I think uh, is pertinent to our health and very important for us to get educated about it to know much about it to learn about it and to delve deep into it to bring on a resource person who, who would also be uh, at the forefront of teaching us what we need to know with regards to suicide and depression. My name again is Lord Caliber and welcome to this live stream, One Life G Television. And this program is entitled Let's Talk Health. Last month we've been discussing and we've been holding health related topics bringing on board resource persons on uh, various topics and gracefully today we are here and today we have a registered mental health nurse Madame Mercy Kwanza who is going to help us who surely is going to help us with the topic suicide and depression as I said and noted earlier on many a times there are people there are, there are people out there who for one way or the other might, might look normal they, they might seem to be going through uh, their, their normal work or, or their normal life, life activities but for, for all you know they, they might be going through serious issues and they might be going through uh, serious pro, uh, problems uh, so we want to know what goes into the mind of a person going through depression. What causes people to opt for the unthinkable, that last no-go area of hanging themselves. So we have our resource person, Madam Esikwansa. Hello, Madam. Hello, Lord. Hello, Madam. Hello, Lord. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. How are you doing? Please, I'm doing well. How are you too? Great. Bring bring your mouthpiece a little closer to your mouth because your voice delays when oh, Okay. Okay. Hope it's okay now. All right. Okay. Yes. So let let let's 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 not really waste time. Let's just delve straight into action. Just as we noted, mental health issue. How critical is this problem? And hey, we can also mix it uh, uh, just for the benefit of the doubt. social media as we do our own a professor, you know, let's try and also chip in some uh, fancy or tree to also help them also understand what we are talking about. So, Madam Mercy, mental health disorders, mental health, what does it do? Okay, when we say mental health, it is the state of we, the mind. Yeah. Please, can you hear me? Yeah, bring, bring your mouthpiece close to your, to, to your mouth. It, it, it uh -huh. Grace, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Right. So when we say mental health, mental health encompasses of emotional, psychological, and social well-being, which influence cognition, perception, and behavior. Okay, so if I understand you right, it is something that deals with our emotional uh, health. Um, emotional, psychological, and social well-being, yeah. Psychological. Great, great. Yeah. All right. So, and how we see things and how we do. Come again. it's and also how we behave how we behave um, 
at a situation or any given situation, how we go about it. Okay, all right. So even the way we, we react to things also speaks volume yes. about our, our mental health. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Or my other or daily. So, Mercy, uh, uh, are there types or yeah. categories when we talk about mental health disorders? We have so many types of mental health disorders. We have the four main. We have anxiety disorders, and then we have okay psychotic disorders, and we have personality disorders. And then we can right? add um, depression to it. Right, right, right. So, with you being a professional on the ground, so yeah, kind of mental health with all the categories or types that you've you've mentioned, which one among these is common on the day-to-day -day activities if you are at work? Which one of these types? that you've mentioned that people really come for to the clinic for for help. Um the two main have anxiety disorders and then we also have depression. That is the most commonest one people come with um at the hospital or the clinical setting. Right. Right. But then uh if you if you check like, this this current economic overturn hardships everywhere, uh, people crying foul. Uh, globally, people are also crying out there. Ghana, we have our own challenges. Uh, the escalation of prices, uh, government institutions, uh, workers going on strike, and all that. What do you think is going on through the minds of people currently? Uh, people are going through a lot. People are going through a lot for the past three months now. I think it started uh, in 2021 where our security agency, that is uh, Ghana Police Service, started taking their own life before the pressure was yeah. too much. And then they couldn't handle, some people couldn't mm. even handle it. And then they ended up committing suicide. And then from March till now, people, a lot of people are going through depression because of how um, goods and services have skyrocketed, talk, talk of uh, fuel, talk yeah. of uh, the food, talk of everything. You buy something, one CD in the morning, afternoon two CDs, evening five CDs, it's crazy. So <laughs> high cost of living. Yeah. So people are going to a lot. Imagine you be paid three thousand. They will take their tax, and you you will end up, um, let's say, two thousand, two hundred, two thousand, three hundred. Taking care of three kids, bought car to work. Mm -hmm. Going up, it's it's a lot. People are going through a lot. People are going through, and if you don't take care, the things you will start hearing, I w I wouldn't be surprised. Wow. So yes, uh, if you've seen the link for the live stream, and you want to join join us one live GA television, uh, streaming live. Let's talk health. Today's topic is suicide and depression. We want to understand from our experts what goes through the minds of people when they are depressed and stressed. Why do people sometimes, they have broken heart and others can hold it and deal with it. What goes through the mind of a person when the only resort that they want to end up with is to cut 
of, of their life. Mercy, with all that you've explained, Hello. now for me, I want to really un understand from this angle, because I, I, I guess made mention of it. Somebody has broken hearts. What, what really happens for a person going through such a, a situation to opt for nothing else but, but, but going for the worst option of all, committing suicide? Sometimes um, human beings, you know, especially with our first loves, person will be promising you heaven and earth and all that. You give in your heart, mind, soul, everything. And then eventually the person tells you, maybe you've dated for a long time. Sometimes people have been dated for about 10, 7 years. And then the other partner will tell you, oh, when you get somebody, marry him or her. And then it's like your world is coming to an end world is crashing down and all that, you know. Some people go to the stream of going to do knocking, they start buying their wedding or whatever stuff, and then the person will come out and say, I'm no more interested. Yeah. After you sharing this, your invitational cards and all that, you know, a person mm -hmm. thinks, oh, the society will laugh at me. I'll become a laughing stock. So the best thing for me to do is to end it all. Yeah, and sometimes you cause of love. Some people sponsor others in furthering their education. Sometimes taking them to vocational schools to to learn trade and all that. And then at the end of it, they come and tell you, "I'm not your class." So when you get somebody in your class, you move with the person. You know, when you think about all those things, like you become a laughing stock and. The best thing they think is good for them is to end it all. Yeah. Right. So from what you, you are you are you are saying, it means that a higher level of di uh, disappointment can make one choose the worst option of committing suicide. And I'm sure it will be relatable to yeah. another person who is indebted to another person because of some big money that they, they cannot pay, they will also plan to end up their life. Now let's go on to, once the person makes such a, de a decision, I'm sure it is a process. What are some of the related signs or indicators that we usually miss when people are going through such a circumstance? So the signs and symptoms of depression, there is persistence Sadness, you know, once a while, we become sad. Maybe when we lose a loved one, when we lose our properties and all that, we go through a lot. Then we we'll think, oh, it's okay. I have to let it go. It has happened. It's okay. We we'll have to move on. And with this depression, it takes more than 21 days. If at least 21 days and wow. so the person is still in, uh, in a sad state, then it means that the person is going through depression. Because it cannot be sad for a whole month. It is not possible. So after three weeks, we term it mm. depression. And there's also mood swings. There's also mood swings. The person, and that one we call it bipolar or bipolar disorder. It's one type of a depression. Bipolar. bipolar. And there's mood swing. The person, yes, the person will be happy five minutes and the person will be sad. And I can use this um, uh, this uh, celebrity, Abna Koko, is right, an Abna. example of somebody going through bipolar disorder. And she'll be happy, and then sometimes she'll, she'll come out and say something, and then you'll not hear from her again. Then she'll come up and she'll be doing something. People don't understand that, oh, why that? It, it's not like that. She's going through um, bipolar depression. And there is also change in appetite or weight. 
And people, when they are depressed, they don't get appetite. They don't even eat. They starve themselves. Yes. And others too, they overeat. Like me, for instance, when I'm depressed, I eat. So you never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. And then there's feeling of hopelessness. There's feeling of hopelessness. Like, there's nothing good in me. There, there's, there's nothing, I can't offer any good thing to the world. So there's nothing good in me. And then there's feeling of worthlessness. I'm not worth anything on this earth. And then there's lots of interest in something they once enjoyed. Something they once enjoyed. Yeah. Something they 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 want to enjoy. Yes. Okay. That is we call it anhedonia in our psychological term. We call it anhedonia. Something they used to do, like the singing. Some people they are the best. We kept, we term them as best in their house. They are the first people you hear their voice when they wake up. Uh huh. They'll be singing and sweeping. Then for about three weeks or so, you will not hear them singing and all that. So it means that there's something wrong with the person. So you will know that this person is going through depression or something, one of the psychological disorders. Yes. So these are some of the signs and symptoms. And then there's crying spell. When we say crying spell, it means that... Um, uh, crying spell. Crying spell. The person has, she has been, he or she has been crying for a long time. So the moment you see the person's face, without him or her even crying, you will notice that uh, the person has been crying for a long time. The face will show that this person has been crying for a long time without even tears on the person's face. So that is what we call crying spells. It's as drawn on the person's face. Yes. Like um, somebody who is alcoholic. Sometimes they, they've yeah. not even taken in their drink, but you see it as drawn on their face. Yes. So there's crying spell. Then loss of weight and all that. Sometimes some people also even neglect their personal hygiene. Right. So, uh, a person uh, showing symptoms such as being in a sad state, worthlessness, hopelessness, uh, with mood swings, bipolar, as you just made mention of, these are some of the indicators that we should all be looking at when people are around us, friends, families, our wives, our kids, our children, uh, our loved ones might be going through and they, they, they will be giving us these signs and symptoms. But usually we turn a blind eye to it and it's just, to us, it's just something normal. Yeah. So these are, yes, these are some of the things we should check. But I, how do people usually cover up this kind of symptoms? Is it substance abuse, alcoholism? How do people usually, to the best of your knowledge, how do people cover up when they are uh, depressed? Yes, as you said, some people go in for drugs just to forget about whatever they are going through. Some people resort to alcohol, others resort to um, smoking so that they will forget about their worries. And some of um, us, especially with the ladies, we go out clubbing with friends and all that so that will cover us. Nobody will see that we are going through um, depression. And for Christians like that, like us, any church program he or she will hear of Obekobi so that he or she will cover up with it. So that he or she will not be in the, in the corner. And the others will realize that you are going, he or she is going through depression. So 
these are some of the things people do to cover up. Wow. So uh, if you're watching, try and share this live feed. Let, let people learn from this mm -hmm. educative program that we are having right now. It is very much important. Depression, 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 leading to suicide, people taking out their lives due to certain issues that some part of the population might be able to handle. But unfortunately, there might be people amongst us who, for one reason or the other, they would go through all these steps and hey, they would just feel like, let's just cut everything short because once we are gone, all these problems would be over. And as our resource person, Madam Mexicana, have indicated to us, there are so many ways that people even cover up when they are depressed. So you might have a friend who is partying with you so hard, who is blazing that fire with you so hard, who is out there chilling out, doing the bottles, cracking beers and all that. But for all you know, that is just a way that they are hiding their depression. So let's talk to each other and let's find out. My name is Caliber. Mercy. So as a health professional, when somebody comes to you depressed, what are the processes that you take the person through? Yes, at the mental health setting, um, you know, causes of depression, one of it is genetics. One of the main causes of depression is genetics. When we say genetics or hereditary, it means that it runs in the family. And sometimes the, the person wow. was born with it, but it is covered. He, need, he or she needs a precipitating factor or something to trigger it for it to come out. Hmm. So when yours is like that, we will start with counseling. We start with counseling. So something small, the person will be depressed. Like when it starts from childhood, when the person fails in an exam and then no, he or she is being bashed by parents, siblings, and all that. The person will quickly go into depression because it is always it is it is there, but it is covered. So he or she needs something to push it for it to come out. Such a person we start with counseling, and when we do exams, brain exams, and we find out that it has getting to, it is even getting to deteriorating state, it's getting worse. We prescribe medication. We prescribe mood elevators to lift the person's mood at all times so that the person will not go into, will, will not, will not, um, will not commit suicide at the end of it or not take his own life. So we give medication to uh, uplift the person's mood or elevate the person's mood. So we give mood yeah. elevators. And we also do counseling. But the counseling, you will come out with what will help you on how to cope with okay. this. And we will also add something to it. We don't decide for you. You decide and we help you with your decision. Okay, so now, Mercy, uh, we see people walk on the street naked. Uh, in our local dialect, they can say, Oma, Oma, Badam. But we, uh, we all know that it is also one uh, part of the mental health challenges that people have. What, what really, or which parts of this depressive state? could lead a person to get to that point. Stripping naked, is it something that can be connected to the genetics that you just made mention of? Uh, yes, some, some is related to, I'll say some, about 70% is related to genetics. Another two is uh, related to disappointment, as we discussed earlier. Like yeah. planning life with your partner and then all of a sudden, the person comes and tells you that I'm no more interested. Yes, it can also come from that side. 
and also uh, it's a chronic illness like cancer, like HIV, like um, diabetes mellitus, like hypertension. You know, this kind of medical conditions, we manage it. We don't cure when it comes. It's management. The person will be taking medications till he or she dies. So when the person sees that, oh, right. I've taken, I've been taking medicine, it's not working, then it will eventually lead to that. Yes. And then some people also taking hard drugs. Okay. And people taking hard drugs. And it gets to a point that they, they can no longer afford it and they start stealing and all that and then you, you see them on the streets. Okay. So as a mental health institution, uh, why is it a challenge for uh, the Ministry of Health or your uh, sector to clamp down on people who are naked on the street, this up or down for us, we call them. Why, why is it a challenge for you for us to have streets uh, with, with, without people like that, on, on like naked people on the street? See the way I'm laughing. It's it's a challenge. Yes. <laughs> in Africa. It's a challenge. In Africa, we, we don't we don't take mental health serious. Wow. Especially in Ghana here, we don't take yes. Yes. You know, when you go outside, they have homes. We have they have homes. And you see, as we are aging in Azamas disease and or the ontological disease or the disease of the aged Alzheimer's is among then they know they see that the person is oh, worrying people in the house and all they take person to their homes which are being taking care of about 90 percent of mental health professionals but in ghana here we don't have something like this and when you go to the ministry of health to talk about something like this who is going to mind you even medical conditions, mm. they are not getting hospitals. How much uh, uh, mental rate or mental, mental patients? So it's a big challenge. It's a very big challenge. They've gone for seminars, they've had meetings to, to talk about this thing, but it, it's not working. So I don't know how. Maybe years later, I don't know. I just don't know. Yes, so you are watching live our, our live stream, One Live G Television. My name is Lord Caliber. We are discussing suicide and depression. Uh, thanks for all those who are tuning in with, with us. My guest today is Madame Mercy Pansa. She's doing excellent, helping us understand these mental health disorders. She's giving us uh, the indicators to see when people around us are going through depression. Soon we'll, we'll, we'll be delving into what we can do to help people, as she has told us, that the process they take in helping people get back on their feet when they are depressed. So if you're watching, share it for the next person to also watch, and let's keep the edu educational uh, chain connecting to other, other people. As she said, currently the economic hardship is really zoning people into a stressful mood, depressive mood, and it's a health challenge. So I hope we have a great solution at the end of the tunnel. Mercy. Now, I put down four on the Hello. screen. It's hard to read them all because here you're laughing. Because it's a challenge even for the government to help read them out of the street. There are no structures made in place to, to, to house them. Now, my question now to you now is, how then do we help them as a society? How then do we help first ourselves not to get to that point? Mm. 
Please, can you come again? Yes, what I'm asking is, what are some of the things we can do for our own selves so that our conditions or our state of depression or stress wouldn't deteriorate to the point where we might think of committing suicide or we going mad and naked on the street? Okay. First of all, we have to have it in mind that um, being sad is part of life, one way or the other. So when you lose a loved one, you can cry all you want, but then you have to accept it that he or she is going to make meet his maker or is going to the another world. One day we shall meet again. So when it comes like that, right. you put yourself together so that you can move forward. And also, if you are reserve type or introvert and you are going to do something, don't, don't hide it. Don't keep it to yourself. You should be open. Find somebody you trust. Somebody you trust that, oh, when I tell this person my problem, he or she is going to help me come out with a better solution. And then you also seek professional professionals when it comes to issues like this, like a mental health practitioner, like myself, or a pastor right. or a friend. Yes. And then you also seek help from God. Yes. Yes. You, you, you made a point that is quite interesting to me. Trust. Trust. We see it more often now when people are going through certain states of stress or depression, when they have problems with each other. Now with the advent of social media, you will see people will just jump on social media with their problems. Is it in the right direction? Is it a, a way to find peace? Or is, is it a, a way to meet their health needs when, with regards to mental health? I don't think social media is the best way. Some people will be bashing you. Others will be making fun of you. Like, um, I think three days ago, there was this guy who has done marine something. He was holding a placard on the street, looking for a job. Others were laughing at him. Others were encouraging him. And then later on, he said he has had about 50 people calling him that they have a job for him and all that. Sometimes if you are not all that strong, when people start bashing, you take, you, you take matters into your own hand and you end it all. And some people too, they give bad advice on social media. Yes. Some people think mm -hmm. social media is the best. I'm coming to put my problems. The people will, will help me and all that. Sometimes it's not the best. Um, I think early this year, a musician took his own life, an upcoming musician. I don't know if you heard it. Like, he was, he was like, I'm tired. He's not getting people to help him and all that. And somebody said, then you should kill yourself. And truly, um, yeah. I think a day or two, the person took his own life. I don't know if you heard it. I think it's an upcoming musician or producer or something. Person is into music. Artist or something like that. Okay. Yeah, the person took his own life. Somebody, it's, it's just a comment. So the person was like, uh, it's, I'm just putting out a comment because everybody is comment. Not knowing that um, what he said stuck into the person's brain and then the person did it. The person committed suicide because of a comment. Wow. So it's not everything that we should bring on social media. Some people give pressure and all that. Yes, they'll give pressure. And uh, we're dealing with their by and, and they are so They are different people. They are different people. So what, what, what kills somebody might not kill me. What kills somebody might not kill me. So it's not the best to bring our problems on social media. Like everybody will know that this is what you are going through. And other people will be encouraging you. 
people will be giving you kind words, people will be giving you hearts and all that, but others too will just spoil everything. You are tired and so what? You have graduated and you are not getting a job and so what? They will give funny, funny comments and then if you are not that strong, you go and take your own life. So you seek professional counseling when you are going through stress, depression, or suicidal ideation. Yes, thank you so much. I think this 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 is uh, good advice for uh, other people who are really into the entertainment industry. It's, it is it is very serious because most of the times, like musicians, they they get uh, they get to some some times when they are not having this hit track to come to be relevant in the system, and they go through serious depressive mood. We know of the Kume Wood season when the season went down you can imagine how far most of these actors and actresses might have been going through a, de a depressive mood god knows how most of them uh, were able to control or deal with their state of depression not having what they really want so i think that that point is very loud so as she's saying social media is there to do a lot of things for us but be careful be very very careful how you engage or how you put your problems out there. And if you're putting your problems out there, you should be ready to stand the backlash because when you put your problem out there, you might end up having a thousand problems out of putting just one problem out there. So just as she, she said, you should be a strong-hearted person or a strong-minded person. As we're drawing close to the end of the program, Mercy. Where do we go no. from now? Where do we go from now? The institutions are not putting up structures that would help house people with mental health disorders. Uh, people are resorting to spiritual means. I know there are myths surrounding when people are going off and all those things. Instead of them to come to uh, for uh, professional help, they might also be going elsewhere where things are not really in, in, in order. What would you say to that? I think I'll commend you for a very good job because you are using your page for a good cause. Now that we are talking, people are taking advice from it. And God bless you for such an opportunity. And I pray we get more people like you so that they will engage us then you do health education on mental health. And I think, as as now, I need people to help me. I want to come out with an NGO that we can go to schools, to um, communities, rural areas, to be preaching mental health. Because looking at how the economy is and how it's going, people are going to work with something. They don't even know that that's what they are going to so I think those of us who are ready, ever ready to go out to the senior high school, that is where it starts. Like after school, when they are not getting jobs to do and all that, they resort to um, hard drugs to forget about their problem, especially with the meals, because the pressure is on them. The family is looking up to you and you are not getting a job to do after school. It's something. So if I get help, like we'll be going to school areas and then where there has been a flood or a flood has hit them. Sometimes they'll be going to the press because looking at um, what they've saved to maybe build and then all of a sudden rains come and then take it over. You know, people go through a lot and then sometimes they take their life. But in Ghana, yeah, they don't take it serious. They don't take mental health serious. Yes. So if I get somebody or an institution who is going to help me, I'm ever ready to go to the senior high schools, to go to our rural areas where getting access, access to health is, is something they don't have or something they are not able to. I'll be very glad to go to rural areas too, to preach mental health to them. 
But yes. uh, engaging the government, it's not going to happen. So, <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> I think they have the the IMF and E uh, levy issues to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that mental health is it, it's it's not of, of it's not of importance to them now. But at least every institution from kindergarten to tertiary, at least every school should have a counselor. A counselor who is good in mental health. You know, these things, sometimes they have problems. They don't want to discuss it with their teachers because they are too familiar with them. They don't want to discuss it with their parents because they are too fam familiar with them. But if they get a professional of whom they don't, have, they don't know, they will be able to come out with problems that they, are, they go to, and then the person will give them advice, maybe engage their parents and then their teachers too, so that they can help that child. But in Ghana, here we don't have... We don't have such things. And it's really having bad effects on these children. Yeah, they are going through a lot. These things, they go through a lot. The things, they go through a lot. Of course, they don't even discuss with their parents or their teachers. Right. So my, my, my question that I asked actually is, Sometimes people might be going through depression. It gets to a point where they are really losing their mind. And we attach some myths of spirituality to it. And instead of them to take these people to the correct facilities for them to be taken care of, they end up at places you even mentioned. Let's seek uh, professional advice and even made mention of the pastors. Don't you think it also causes some kind of confusion and intent or heightens the, the problem? Yeah, some people resort to this spiritual spiritualist that, oh, and um, what my child is going through, I think it's coming from my ancestors trying to punish him or her. It's not always like that. It's not always like that. They will be giving them concussions and all that. And at the end of the day, they of also course, have yeah. medical conditions. They also have medical conditions attached to the mental health, attached to, attached to the uh, mental issues that they are going through. And sometimes it's not all facets that, that are all bad, you know, this one man said, some, some are there for business. Some are for business. They are in for the business. They are in for the money. So they will tell you, they will lie to you. They will use psychology to lie to you. I have this soap. I have this water. When you bath, they will, they will, they will chase the spirit away and all that. Sometimes they will go round, 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 and at the end, they will end up at the hospital. Meanwhile, it is something that could have, you could have had remedy to it before even deteriorating. But they will go around, 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 and then when the person sees that they have drained you, they have escorted money from you, they have finished you, and then they will tell you that you should take it to the hospital. <laughs> Always have issues like that. Yes, yeah, so well said. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Mercy Kwanza, for this resourceful information that you've given us as she's telling us all. When you're going through any health issue, try and seek the appropriate professional help so that with time, your problem wouldn't escalate to even worse stages. But then if you seek the right professional at the right time, God willing, inshallah, your problem surely can be solved, controlled, and managed. Mental health issue, as she, as she uh, noted, is downplayed here in our, in our part of, of the world. So people go through that stage centrally. They are, they, are, they are left on their own. They even get to the point where either they kill themselves or they, they strip naked and walk on the streets 
of Takwa, they are crap, Masio, wherever they want, and nobody seems to care about them. Eating whatever yeah, they can really find. So mental health issue is serious, and we should really take note of that. One important thing she said that I'm, I, 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 I really support her is that if you're watching and you're an NGO, if you're watching and you're interested to help push people like herself to our various schools, communities, where she can also advocate on this mental health issue, teach people about depression, how to manage it, how to seek appropriate help from healthcare professionals like her, herself, teach people about the indicators that they need to look out for when their relatives, friends, children might, might, might be going through such in incidents. Hey, we will be so much happy if you could also engage her on that field. My name is Lord Caliber, and tonight we've been discussing suicide and depression. Send your comments after you are at any point in time if you meet this live, live stream. Let us know how you manage depression let us know if you know anybody that out of depression, out of a broken heart, out, out of some business uh, issues, might have taken out their life, out of stress, might have gone through some serious problems. Let's share our story and let's learn from each other. So, Mercy, your last words before we let you run away. <laughs> Thank you, all viewers. And... God bless you for watching this program. And then thank you very much, Dr. Kaluba, for hosting me on your show. I'm very, very honored to be part of this program. And as he said, please, if you have any problem, look for a trusted person. Share your problem with the person. Or look for a professional and share your problem with the person. We are not going to preach to the world that this person is going through this. No, we don't do that. We deal with confidentiality. You can see myself and any other mental health professional to help you go through whatever you are going through. We will help you to come out of it. And then, last but not the least, suicide is never an option. Suicide is never an option. Don't take matters to your own hand. Don't kill yourself. You are not the first person who has gone through that. You come out from it very soon. Inshallah. I don't, I don't know if it's, that's how they say it. <laughs> By the grace of God, you come yeah, out yeah, from yeah. it. No condition, is, no condition is coming in. If you don't need yourself, I need you. Your parents need you. Your siblings need you. Ghana needs you. The world needs you. You don't know what you have. You don't know. You don't take your own life. This. This side is never an option. Thank you very much. And have a wonderful evening. Yes, thank you, madam. Thank you for helping us understand what we didn't understand today. We've learned a lot. And uh, we say bye-bye to our honorable guests. Mother Mercy Kwanza, she's a registered mental health nurse, and I say, God bless you, God help you, reach higher heights to help Ghana make a better place with regards to mental mm -hmm. health. Mercy, salute, and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yes, so <laughs> I hope we all learned something from what Mother Mercy Kwanza did come in to educate us about mental health is issue, mental health is a big problem, mental health is a challenge for us, mental health, mental health is causing a whole lot of problems. Uh, so thanks for the people that came, Sudden Priscilla, God bless you, God bless you too. Uh, share it, let people also watch it and let people learn from it. Uh, God willing, next week, shall we have some serious subjects to treat, we have Nana Bwedi, to take us to a whole new level and uh, we, we, we will be posting the topic we will be discussing with him, Mr. Babalao, Mr. Herbalist, hey, he's a nutritionist, he's a healer, so 
next week, God willing, we have an interesting guest to also engage us with the health topic. My name is Les Kaliba. Thank you so much for being part of this program. And as always, as I say, any point in time when you meet this live stream, all you got to do is to share it so that people would also learn from what we've discussed. Mental health is an issue. And as you noted, suicide is not an option. So I'm not the first person to go through the problem that you are going through. A whole lot of people have gone through it. So as you noted again, nothing is permanent. Give yourself time. You can do the crying. Find a trustworthy shoulder to lean and cry and share your story or your problem with. Don't hold it to yourself too much. Share your problem. Social media is not usually the best place to pour out your heart, your, your, your heart out there because if you don't have a strong heart, you are going through a depressive state, you are going through stress. When you put your problems out there on social media, maybe they will even make it worse for you. People bashing and people sending me negative uh, comments. So the, our brothers and sisters, including myself in the, in, in the entertainment industry, let's find ways, amicable ways, healthy ways in managing our depression especially when we're struggling to have a hit track, when we're struggling to have a good movie out there. People in business, when the contract is not really uh, crushing in, when the finances are breaking down, when we are at a loss, when we are owing people with we cannot pay them, suicide is not the best option. Nothing is permanent. Give yourself time. Seek professional he uh, health care. Time, all these problems that you think will stay forever, will just be a thing of the past. Let's not encourage suicide that thought. Let's not encourage suicide that thought. Let's not encourage suicide that thought. And let's not also resort to substance abuse as a remedy in aiding or healing ourselves or, or confiding our problems into as a solution. Because at the end of the day, you would end up having problems worse than you had. You end up having cirrhosis of the liver, you end up having kidney issues. Just because you had one problem, then you start to alcoholism, and then comes the other problem. Let your God be your guide, be prayerful, meditate, relax, eat good food, rest, relax, connect with right people, positive people, engage in social gathering when possible, exercise, and manage well your time. Plan, think ahead. Use the engine that God has given you. I know with time, all the problems that you are going through will just be a thing of the past. You are not the only person going through this current economic hardship. Globally, people are crying. So are you going to commit suicide because business, your business is not going that well? So just in 2022, you are, you are, you are having a problem. So then you want to throw yourself up. Hold your peace. And time all will be well. My name is Los Kaliba. Thank you so much for being a part of this live stream. While I GA television as on the program, let's talk to us. Right here next week, we will be discussing another enticing and serious problem. But before I go, I will recommend one thing for you. If you are in any part of the world and you need quality Ghanaian made shoes, I recommend one place for you, Kingsman Shoes. Kingsman Shoes is right here in Takradi. This brother is doing great. Check him out on Facebook, Kingsman Shoes. Check him out on Facebook. Go through his catalog and place your orders. We have quality Ghanaian made shoes, quality designs, beautiful work out there that the brother is doing. If you need massage therapy here in Western region, in the whole part of Ghana, any part of the region that you want it, I will also entreat you to call Bone Movie Rehab Massage Clinic, read them out, check them out on Facebook. You can also call them on 0277-677-814 for all the rehabilitative massage therapy works. So, as I, as I always say, let your health be your wealth. Do good to yourself. Enjoy life. A life is short. Suicide is not an option. Look you all for watching. Thank you. God bless you. Share it for the next person. Also learn from this educational video we have. So I love you.